You're still watching yesterday on Afia TV, and I am marvelous, Apwamaga. It's World Malaria Day today, a day observed annually on April 25 to bring global attention to the efforts being made to end malaria and encourage action to reduce suffering and death from the disease. The theme of World Malaria Day 2024 is Time to Deliver Zero Malaria, Invest, Innovate, Implement. Joining me in the studio to talk about this is pharmacist Ezine Chika, senior resident pharmacist UNTH, and pharmacist Eberio Okonkwa, senior resident pharmacist UNTH. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm very kind. Okay, so uh, malaria is something people look at as a very, the most easiest disease, would I say, very to cure. Yes, moments, very yeah. common in our environment. And yeah. you know, I've heard people say malaria doesn't last up to a week. If your malaria persists more than a week or two, then you need to see a doctor, or it's even not a malaria. So I want you to um, give us a brief background of what malaria is, its symptoms, and why it has been on the rise instead of declining. Okay. Good morning, my viewers. Um, malaria, actually today is Malaria World Day. We are trying to you know, put up this campaign for people to know that Malaria actually is not as common as people made it to look like. It's actually killing our people and it is continuing to kill, especially the children and then the elderly. A lot of people are at higher risk of contracting this uh, infection. But then, based on what you said, I would say that when someone is exposed to um, a mosquito bite, it takes about... 10 to 15 days for you to begin to have the symptoms in right, some cases. Please just hold your line of thoughts. We'll go on a short break now and when we come back, we we'll, would we'll continue our discussion. Just to watch news today on Afia TV and we were listening to uh, pharmacist Ezene speak on malaria. Please go ahead with your line of thought. Okay, I was saying, I was trying to say that malaria is not as simple or, or common or easy as people made it to look like. Uh, because a lot of people are actually dying of this disease. Okay, a lot of groups are really very vulnerable, most especially our children. So today, this campaign is, is trying to like expose our people to know what we need to know about this malaria, to know that it's not as common as they made it to look like, to know that people are still dying of this malaria. Even World Health Organization statistics has even proven that when you look at in 2022, that when you look at the statistics, you find out that Nigeria is stopping the shop. Okay, we recorded about 31 percent of death in 2022, then followed by other African countries. So we have not really gotten it right. We have not really done what we need to do, both as an individual and then as as a country. So that's why we are here today to tell the public that look, this disease is killing us. We need to wake up. We need to do something to get it right. So uh, uh, what would you say is the cause of this disease and why do you think it's persistent? Yeah, we know that malaria is caused by a parasite, yeah. okay, of the protozoan uh, family. We have series of those species in those family, but common in our environment is uh, the P. falciparum, the Plasmodium falciparum, that's the most commonest one and the most dangerous of all other species. Okay, so when you are exposed to the bite of this um, mosquito, that is when you begin to feel the symptoms. Common among the symptoms are people feel that uh, it's nothing, it's one fever or what we call high temperature. People could experience headaches, some could have um, muzzle aches. You know, children could start feeling weak and you're like, uh, what's wrong with this child? Just feeling weak, he's not himself or herself. People feel malay, like feeling of unwell. You don't, even, you don't actually know what is wrong with you, but you know that you're not feeling yourself. Okay, these are the possible symptoms that people could, could uh, have when you're beginning to, you know, feel or have malaria in your system. And when that happens, actually, you're actually supposed to go meet either your community, your pharmacist, or meet, go to any healthcare facilities to assess the, the care and treatment. Okay, so I had, um, I've had people saying many times that AA... AA genotype, people with AA genotype are prone to malaria. So what has uh, malaria got to do with the blood groups and malaria susceptibility? Go ahead, from okay. Perry. Thank you very much. The malaria and blood group, there is 
even though they make that speculations, but I don't think is a, I don't think is as true. A, is true, because there are some AAs or AS rather that still have suffer from the severe malaria. But uh, but it's proven that the the sickle gene that those that have AS or SS that because of the way their gene is sickled that they are not prone to because malaria causes that hemolysis breaking down of the red blood cells. So the way their their gene is sickled that they don't really have um, you know they don't really have that breakdown as in AA that doesn't have a sickled cell. So that's the, the what statistics said, but in most generally you find some AS too that do have malaria. So who are those at higher risk of this disease? Okay, those yeah. are higher risk are the pregnant women and the young children, the elderly, and even the non-immune travelers. What I mean by non-immune travelers are those that have never been prone to malaria before, like they came, they came from uh, overseas or another, other countries to where there is now the malaria endemic area. So these are those that have never been exposed to it. They are the ones that are really on high uh, risk of having malaria. Yeah, she's trying to say those that are coming from less endemic region to probably visiting us that you know that we are living with this big problem, okay? And then um, infants, okay, also suffer from it. Uh, pregnant mothers is a very, um, very, very big risk for them having a pregnant mother come down with malaria. And that's why most of the times, if you're someone that actually assessed care in a hospital, um, during your second trimester, you're meant to take the IPT. Mm -hmm. That's the intermittent preventive therapy for malaria. Okay, so there was a time I was treating malaria. I think I, I took malaria drugs for a week. And then the next, three weeks later, malaria came back. And my dad was like, it's because you didn't treat malaria with typhoid. You need to get malaria, you need to get typhoid drugs and take it together with the malaria, malaria drugs. And I've heard people say it many times that whenever you're taking, whenever you're treating malaria, make sure you also treat it with typhoid. How true is this and why? I won't say it is true. Okay. Okay. I won't say it is true. The first question I'll ask you is that when you took that malaria drug, first, what drug did you take? Did you take the right drug? Secondly, did you take it as prescribed? I won't recommend anybody without an investigation, just trying to take anti-malaria at the same time taking uh, drugs for typhoid because most okay. of the drugs we use for typhoid uh, treatment are antibiotics. And it's not something you should just go to a pharmacy or any drugstore and say, give me a drug for typhoid. When there is no sensitivity testing, when there is no lab to say actually there is presence of typhoid. But that's the wrong um, um, information, a yes, yeah, mm -hmm. misconception that people have. If you don't combine the two, you're not getting it right. If you don't combine the two, that it's not going to go, you're not going to be free of malaria. But that's not true because you will be misusing or rather abusing antibiotics. So, then what would you another, say? Sorry, okay. another thing I want to point out is it might be true the person has malaria and took the anti malaria. Then, in the next one week, the person comes back again to having malaria. Yeah. It's very common due to drug resistance. And that's the aim of preaching about uh, antibiotics uh, awareness, creating awareness of abuse, abuse of antibiotics. This, uh, like she earlier said, the P. Uh, Fasiparum is right prone to, and that's the what the the parasite that is very endemic, and is prone to resistance. So it's possible that if one doesn't complete the dose, like if you take one or two doses of uh, the, the popular ACT, antimicinin based combined therapy, you start feeling okay. Then the person will drop and not continue taking the, the yeah, drug sure. again. And if you do that, you are creating more resistance so that uh, the next time you want to take it, it might not work. So it's, obvi it's obvious that maybe it's as it due to drug resistance is the reason why the, after taking it, the person comes back again to have, not necessarily that because he did not take it with typhoid, or that investigation, like you said, it wasn't really malaria that was the cause of okay, the, the, problem. the problem. Okay, so before we go into what is done on this day, the campaigns and all of that, I'd like you to tell me how malaria can be treated and also prevented. Okay, we have um, the Hope World Health Organization approved the use of ACT, atemisinin based combination therapy. That's what it stands for. Okay, that's the first line medication that is approved by World Health Organization to be used in the treatment of malaria. 
Now, it's a three day, three days um, drug treatment. Okay, depending on the one that your prescriber chooses to give you, you are supposed to, okay, um, comply with the instructions on how to take the medication, when to take it, the quantity to take, and then the duration that you're supposed to take it. We are not here to advertise, but they are very common. Uh, the commonest among them is the Coatem that everybody know about. So it's out there. There are so many of them, but it has to. It has a base of the Artemisinin family. No, also we, we heard of um, the malaria vaccines, and just during the week, two new malaria vaccines were rolled out across Africa. Talk to us about these vaccines. Okay, the the vaccines. The first one that came out was uh, I think it's uh, RTS, yeah. but that one uh, um, from the studies that it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't really, um, that it was effective though, but then when the second one came out, the one they call R21, that's the new one that the government approved. Okay, the uh, one wasn't approved day. by the government. It mm -hmm. wasn't officially approved by the government. But this R21, R the new one that came, that was approved April 2023. That was last year, that was approved. And they ran a, um, they ran a um, clinical trial, the third clinical trial in Lagos where they used uh, ch children from five months to 17 months mm. to run the, the trial. So at the end of the, you're supposed to be to take three doses of the vaccine, the malaria vaccine, then after the third dose, then after 12 months, you now take the fourth one. And you're supposed to get the person immune to malaria. And the, from the studies, it was shown that after two years, that those that underwent that um, the vaccine, the trial, the clinical trial, did not come out with, did not have even any malaria, but is yet to be approved by WHO. Because after this, their third trial, they want to now go into the fourth trial before they can now be officially being approved. It has not been officially been approved as an anti-vaccine um, to be used as malaria, but it's undergoing trial. So how long does um, immunity from the vaccine last? immunity from malaria from the vaccine, how long does it last? Well, from the studies, it's mm. only, they've checked them for two years now, okay. and they've not had, you know, these trials that they need so to... So if I take the vaccine, mm. I would take it in the next two years, or for, for two years, I wouldn't have malaria? That those that, on, those that underwent, the, those that took, underwent the clinical trial did not have, for two years now, okay. they've not had malaria. So it's still under trial. Okay. Okay, I also want to add that the first one, the RTS, they actually did a pilot study in some countries, three of the uh, three African countries. I think um, Ghana was part of it, and um, Malawi, and uh, which other country again that was part of the pilot study. And truth be told, there are studies that shows that they recorded positive um, impact that they had after the whole thing that they had like. 13% drop in the level of, in the, in the mortality rate. And then there is also a reduction in the hospitalization of children with severe malaria. So I think that's a good one, okay? But the issue is that it hasn't really been with us. We are actually expecting it. We are like, we are eager to have it down here, okay? Okay, so let's talk about World Malaria Day. Okay. What's done on this day? And what does the theme of this year aim to achieve? Um, World Malaria Day actually is expected to highlight all the global efforts, all that has been done globally in order to curb malaria, in order to eliminate malaria. It's also expected to a kind of um, um, improve um, the political uh, sustenance of this program and also for the um, continued investment in programs that will end malaria. Okay, that's what the World Malaria Day speaks. We want to know, we want to highlight what has been done globally, all the effort that has been put together to curb malaria. Okay, from Asiburi, talk to us about this, the theme of this year's Malaria Day. What does he aim to achieve? Okay, um, this year's Malaria is to create more awareness because like we are in Nigeria, in Nigeria now, the, the death rate is increasing. Out of all the African countries that have the 96% of 
death rate is Nigeria has 32 percent of death rate from malaria so it's creating that awareness that the things that are happening and to be able to you know create that uh, to to be able to reach out because most of those that have this um those most of those that have that are dying from this man are those in the remote areas where they don't have uh, enough health care services so the aim is to you know to be able to create more awareness and reach out to to you know trying to cover up and trying to cover up the the death rate of malaria okay so talk to us about the challenges we have in ruling malaria uh, back in nigeria okay okay um the concept of or the initiative for robot malaria is actually to you know to find to do things that will that concept was i think was initiated 1997 and then it was launched sometime in abuja in nigeria 2000 and we are looking at that by the time we get to 2010 that we should have halved the number of malaria incidences and mortality okay so but the challenges we have right now is that there was an uh, a program that was initiated that was aimed as at you know gearing towards preventive measures most times we say that prevention is better than cure you know so one of them was the use of in, um, insecticide treated nets now I wouldn't say that that program didn't achieve success. It did achieve success, but not as much as was expected. Because when you get down to the, to the um, remote areas, uh, villages, the hard to reach areas, it wasn't properly done. It wasn't properly done. So people there still sleep without this uh, treated net. They are still infested with this uh, organism, with this uh, parasite, and they are still coming down. And that's why the death rate coming from that area is high. Another challenge is that we are not able to sensitize people. We are not able to teach these people. There should be some sort of community awareness, okay, to teach them that, yes, this thing is here with us, and we are sick of it. This is what we should do. Give them the net, or even tell them, teach them that they can actually do the indoor residual spraying. That's by using the, the common um, insecticide that you can buy from the market and spray in your room. Then commonly amongst them is that we should teach them that there are little little things we can do on our own as individual to make sure that we reduce the number of this mosquito in our environment one is they should know that common clearing of the bushes around them will reduce the number of mosquito around us clearing your gutters making sure that you do not have uh, stagnant waters around you the old tires that people don't just dump anywhere accumulate water and mosquito breach in them so i think if we're able to do that it will help. These are challenges we are facing. Then another thing is that we are faced with poor health facilities. Okay, there are there are um, hospitals and in those villages that you get to, they don't even have the equipment to even run tests. Not to talk of treatment. Now another major problem is poverty. Okay, even when they are able to access the hospital, do they have the money to pay for the diagnosis? Even when they do, do they have the money to pay? for the treatment for malaria. It's not cheap, you and I know that. So just to round off our discussion, what do you think the government and the society can do better to eradicate this disease? Okay, I think that the government can wake up those programs of giving free the insecticide treated net, sensitizing the people on how to use it, letting them know of the common hygiene that they could do to help themselves and then making it easy at least funding some hospitals that can these people can get to and assess diagnosis and treatment at a very subsidized rate that will help all right thank you so much for coming on the show for us do you have something to ask it? yes i the the like you look at uh, cape verde they've been officially been declared uh, malaria free yeah and they did that with uh you know this sensitization, the, even treating the neighboring, their neighboring, um, after they had this heartbreak that they had outburst, they had, they now sensitized, including the neighboring uh, um, countries around them to be able to curb, curb up this malaria, uh, this malaria. And I believe that if it's done, like, because if you look at the cycle, the malaria, uh, the parasite life cycle, you find out that it has a human Parts. You have the insects, the mosquito parts. The human part is saying that if the mosquito can do not bite 
and take up the male and female garments of those parasites, they won't be able to give some another person malaria. So trying to, if we can, everybody can completely treat malaria, then cover up the mosquito, the breeding, and the mosquito, especially the swamp areas. Insecticides cannot only be individual. The government can also help in sensitizing the whole environment. That will be able to curb malaria. All right, thank you for coming on the program. Thank, thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you for staying with us. Do not forget to follow us on our social media platforms at Afia TV Official. I am Marvelous Apwamaga. Many thanks for watching. <laughs>